what it is like living with a covert narcissist. You will enter the relationship full of love and excitement for your future because that narcissist has said and proven to you that you you two are soulmates and meant to be together for the rest of your life and you are best friends and you completely believe this so you dive headfirst into probably one of the most emotionally um, charged relationships you've ever been in in your life so a short you move in together and a short time after living with them you start to notice these behaviors that you never saw before and um all of a sudden there are all of these rules that you must follow but they don't follow those same rules they have double standards they start nitpicking and complaining about every single thing that you do or you don't do and who you are and you're damned if you do and damned if you don't um, they they pick on traits that you might have and that are very much a part of that um, of you that they were fully aware of during the time that was leading up to you uh, living with them so as they were getting to know you and now all of these characteristics that they found attractive and endearing uh, about you in the beginning are the cause of their misery so after a couple of months possibly even a couple of weeks or days I'm sure that, that it, the number varies depending on how long you have been cohabitating with your narcissist. They will be miserable and they will disappear and give you the silent treatment when you inquire about the fact that they're giving you the silent treatment or any other transgression that has gone on in the relationship. Say that you found some evidence of them cheating and that you confronted them with it as any normal person would do. They leave the house and disappear for three days and they block your number and you can't get a hold of them. Uh, and it's all your fault, they will say, because of what I, what the aforementioned and insert tiny every tiny little thing that you can think of that you may or may not have possibly ever even done or heard of before they are going to constantly run hot and cold leaving you completely off balance because you will never know which one of their personas that you are going to be dealing with you will begin to believe that it really is your fault because how could somebody tell you all of the things that they did and then treat you and treat you so horribly yet love you the next day how could they be so unhappy with you all of the time you must be a terrible person or so you begin to think sometimes they become unbelievably controlling and demand that you change everything about yourself and when you actually do make the efforts to change they will they'll pretend they don't notice it and they may or may not notice it but they will instead find something else about you to berate you about they will all of a sudden come up with some great gift or start making plans for the future again that's called future faking and you, you think okay finally they are back to being the nice guy or girl that i know and he does he or she does love me after all but that will that only lasts like uh, for a br very brief time, and none of that future fa future faking ever pans out. And once again, you are back to to square one, being a worthless piece of nothing. So this is where it starts to get really bad. You start doubting yourself all of the time. You're walking around in a fog. You can barely drag yourself out of bed. Even if you, you are a, a successful career man or woman who typically makes wise, thought out, and insightful decisions and is in fact sought out by their peers and colleagues to help them make business and personal decisions. And yes, I'm saying this based on the, uh, the narcissist, um, you know, or I'm not saying this being based on a narcissist being male or female, because obviously I try to make uh, this is gender neutral as possible, but you will find yourself thinking that your decisions are actually wrong and that 
there is something wrong with you. You may even have made appointments with mental health professionals for the wrong reasons, not because you are a victim of abuse, but because you really believe that something is wrong with you and you are constantly depressed and on edge and in that fog and you're, you are living in a 100% you all of the time in fight or flight mode and the stress and the anxiety levels the hormones that are racing through your body they are slowly killing you and the the anxiety levels are off of the charts you may be experiencing depersonalization or derealization and that's uh, a sensation that co goes kind of coincides with the anxiety of being outside of your body and kind of being an observer to your own actions from the outside and cortisol and peptide changes and these are things that are literally changing your brain chemistry you will start to feel physically weak and you may start vomiting you may lose your hair like i did uh, where you never got sick before uh, autoimmune diseases can either be diagnosed or flare up again hair loss is something that happened to me uh, due to narcissistic abuse, I believe, and I still have not recovered from it. And you wonder, how the hell did I get myself into this position and what is wrong with me? How could I have been so wrong about who this person is? And you constantly engage in this nonsensical battle where you entered a conversation just to talk about something important to you or maybe just to get the narcissist opinion about something. And all of a sudden you find yourself defending yourself about something that has nothing to do with what you even wanted to discuss in the first place. And you will be confronted with logic and reasoning that is reminiscent of a third grade playground. And no matter how many ways you try to explain the, the point that you were trying to make, they they will not hear you and no matter what you say it will be met with a oh so what you're saying is blah 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 the narcissist putting words in your mouth that is not at all what you were saying and they will storm off acting victorious as though the conversation was for the sole purpose of them to be proving themselves right and it was you will not even want to have conversations after a certain point with the narcissist and you may even be avoiding the narcissist uh, as you are trying to live around each other what it feels like you feel like you are sleeping next to a stranger and anytime there is any disagreement no matter how tiny or inconsequential inconsequential they will throw in the the whole kitchen sink bringing up every single thing that you have done or not done and they that let you, they let you know that you are being viewed and they really do believe that you are wrong and inconsiderate no matter how irrelevant. And my narcissist's favorite thing to call me was ungrateful. They will also bring up stuff that you told them that may have happened long before you met them and somehow act as if it was done against them and use that for ammo or bring up things that you said in confidence to them about things that you don't like about yourself or personal secrets or family uh you know things family secrets and throw those things at you in an effort to degrade you and once again make you feel like you are wrong and they are in the right and that they are better than you and even though they are bringing up uh all this stuff none of it has any relevance to the issue at hand you will find yourself sadly constantly apologizing apologizing for things that you should not ever apologize for and they will never apologize for anything ever no matter how obviously inconsiderate or inappropriate their behaviors and their actions are or were and you will finally realize that you had no idea that the person you are living with is a monster and you will discover that you are in fact living with a complete stranger